So in this next final video on the evidence for evolution, we'll conclude our look at the pieces of evidence um, in this uh, rather smaller uh, flowchart by entitling it Evidence for Evolution 1, 2, 3. There we go. So let's conclude our discussion on the evidence for evolution. Hopefully you have been persuaded thus far, though I'm not trying to persuade or dissuade from any belief whatsoever. Disclaimer. Uh, we're going to continue our general look at the evidence for evolution that you are responsible for as a general biology student by looking at something known as the fossil record. So, the fossil record sounds like a snooze fest, right? It's absolutely not because it's a crucial component of evolution altogether. What we can look at are um, simply the remains of animals, of organisms, of bacteria even. That's how great the technology that we have now is. The remains of things in sedimentary rocks. These are rocks that provide us fossils. And because of this, we establish a great, rather accurate record of of all of the world's ancient organisms. And what can you do once you've established these ancient organisms? Hey, let's use our good evidence friend of evolution known as homology, use some tree thinking ideas and start mapping these fossils on a tree that shows a common ancestor and a branch that shows another common ancestor and another species. And all this development that we see through natural selection can be displayed because we get empirical, meaning strong scientific evidence from a fossil record. And lastly, the last piece of evolution to understand is something known as biogeography. So we'll do that one over here. Biogeography. So we can look at the biology of the geography of the Earth and notice the following. We look at biogeography because this is defined as the study of past and present distribution. So we'll say past and present distribution. So I'm going to put that in capital letters because this is actually the key word here. Past and present distribution of organisms. So we'll say of ORGS for organisms. This is the study of past and present distribution of organisms. So what we really want to look at through the biogeography is the following. The geographical distribution of organisms. The area at which they are distributed on this earth directly affects directly affects evolution altogether this is something you should understand from natural selection because natural selection remember what it was really dependent on time and place this is the real hardcore study devoted to focusing on that dependency to place natural selections dependency on place a good example of the study of biogeography can be through something that our good friend Mr. Charles Darwin discovered and noticed. Being the genius that he was, the legend that he was, he noticed the following thing. He looked at two different island structures, okay? So he looked at two different geographical regions, one known as Cape Verde and one more famously uh, usually known as the Galapagos. Okay, so this is where he did a lot of his work, but what he noticed is interesting and is related to biogeography in terms of Cape Verde and the Galapagos. Cape Verde is an island system, we would say, or an island off the coast of, uh, I believe it's West Africa, off the coast of West Africa. Okay, so what we have to imagine is that the geographical area, distribution, uh, not the distribution, but area that we're talking about is West Africa. But there's an island just off the coast of it, technically not in West Africa because it's not on the continent. It's an island region. That means it's within the water. It's not on the continent specifically, but it's near West Africa. You know what he noticed in Cape Verde? He noticed that the plants and the animals in this west off the coast of West Africa area are similar, are quite similar, strikingly similar to those on continent. 
which continent are we talking about? To the ones that are actually on West African land. These are not technically on West Africa because they're islands. These are islands off of West Africa. But he noticed that because of the geography, the distribution of the organisms was still the same. This shows time. And this shows that natural selection is certainly dependent on place. The Galapagos, because he's a good scientist, Mr. Darwin, he is. He says Cape Verde shows this. What is about the Galapagos? Well, the Galapagos are an island system off the South America coast. Okay, off South America coast. You should already be thinking what this side of the flowchart is about to say because it supports the Cape Verde and Darwin sees that the Galapagos, even though they're off the South American coast, they have, or it has plants, plus animals, and this is quite repetitive but quite necessary, plants and animals similar to those on the continent. Exactly what he saw on Cape Verde. This is interesting because it shows that the distribution of organisms is directly offend, uh, affected and sort of cor correlated with the geography. And finally, the last thing that biogeography sort of tells us is something known as continental drift. It sort of explains the idea of continental drift in relation to evolution. Always remember, how does this relate back to evolution? How does Darwin's discoveries on Cape Verde and Galapagos relate back to evolution? Well, he shows that the geographical distribution of the plants and animals, both on West Africa and off the coast of West Africa, are intimately evolution, uh, evolving together. Same thing with the Galapagos. Finally, in continental drift, a lot of people know this already, um, at one point, all the continents were together, right? They were all together, um, and that was known as Pangaea, okay? Pangaea. That was known as Pangaea, when all of our continents were grouped together as one simple continent, one mega continent called Pangaea. Well, what happened in continental drift was that seven of the major continents, this mega continent's plates, actually, because the Earth is consistent of plates. I'm not any, I'm not a geologist by any means, but just understand that there are plates underneath the the Earth, and these plates move. Okay, the seven plates moved to give us what do you expect? Seven. I gave you that number for a reason. Seven plates moved to give certain shifts, and these shifts give us our seven continents. So now you can sort of tie this back to evolution because you realize that at one point all of life was together on this one mega continent and now life has separated. Why do you see such variation all over the world? Why isn't everything, you know, why aren't all animals quite similar to each other? Why are there so varying behind in every single continent. Why is there so much distribution? Why is there so much different distribution? Well, that's because of biogeography, of course. The distribution of organisms directly affects the evolution of them. If there are seven possible continents, the seven organisms on those continents will directly be different. They will be distributed differently and their evolutionary um, components will be quite different from one another because they are no longer on this Pangaea continent. That's why we see not all of the variation, but a certain amount of variation has definitely been tied to the fact that there was continental drift to separate and thus to create variation in um, a nutshell, we would say. So that gives us our final pieces of evolution. In our final flowchart, we're going to be looking at a theme that I really like, and that is the diversity of life.